the Industrial Revolution is a key moment in human history where we go from being an agrarian society where most people live in the countryside working on farms their whole life to where people shift and move to the cities. And that's why if you look at the world nowadays, the majority of the population lives in cities. And you can see that with where we live in Cedar Rapids. Um, this movement began in 1760 and goes until about 1850. And the best country for us to take a look at on this uh, is Great Britain. It starts in Great Britain, and it starts in Great Britain for two reasons. One, because they have coal. Two, because they have iron. Coal is a key resource to have because uh, it is much better than wood for burning, and it allows you to burn things at a higher temperature, which is needed for if you're going to smelt iron and other metals. And iron is the key metal at this time. It's much more durable than bronze or anything else, and they will use it to make almost everything uh, in creating new buildings, creating new uh, inventions, things like the steam locomotive, all of those will use metals instead of wood and other um, and other materials. Now, if you're going to have or to use these resources, you need to be able to transport them. And England had a lot of great waterways. They had a lot of rivers and they had a lot of canals, so this made it really easy to transport them. And uh, it's easier because you can just load it on a boat and it'll flow down with the current or you can put a ship behind it and it'll push it and it can carry a lot more than trying to have some horses or oxen draw it through the streets. Now eventually a lot of uh, industries will switch over to railroads because those will be faster and you don't have to build these deep canals to put boats on. Um, but that'll come later in the Industrial Revolution. Now, the key component to this, or that the other key component, other than having those resources that you need to have, is you need to have an agricultural revolution. Um, and this is where farming became more efficient. And when farming becomes more efficient through new technologies, such as seed drills or new ideas, such as crop rotation and using fertilizer, um, you're going to get a lot more product or a lot more crops. And when you have a lot more crops, you're going to have a population increase uh, because of the abundant food and when uh, and because that food will be a lot cheaper people will be able to eat more uh, more kids will survive uh, to adulthood and then have more kids and you can see that we have a sharp spike in the population around 1700 uh, right here in this area we got 1700 there and it the population of the world spikes and it's still spiking uh, today because of our continued improvements in agriculture, uh, but also in other industries such as health and um, other technologies that have made our life easier. Now, this was a good thing. This, uh, all this farming, uh, all the new crops was a good thing. It, uh, it, it allows people to have more food, but at the same time, it, 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 there's a downside to it. Um, the rich landowners uh, wanted more land because they could make more money off of it and uh, they could grow more land. And so what they have the government do is they have the government close down the public areas and what we have are these enclosure acts. Uh, and you can see here in this graphic that the green territories on the map were common land that everyone could use. No matter who you were, you could use it, you could plant some crops on it, you could go through foraging to try to find food if you didn't make enough through the year. And these get closed down, and this will force the poor people to starve that can't use this or that don't have a farm, and they then leave the countryside, uh, and they leave for the cities uh, where new jobs are coming up. And so we have this urbanization uh, where everyone's flocking to the cities to find jobs, and they're looking and going to cities that have sprung up around coal and iron mining industries or uh, the factories that have been built up to uh, use iron or use other uh, materials uh, that have uh, popped up during this time. Now, this is a great thing because there are a lot more jobs and people don't have to work on the farms, but at the same time, you're crowding a lot of people into a small space, and the hygiene there isn't going to be as good, and so people... Um, lose a little bit of their health that they had in the countryside by moving to the cities, um, especially uh, in the coal and iron mining industries where uh, they're going to be working in 
mines during the day, and then when they get out and they go to their home, there are going to be coal factories around there or iron factories around there using coal to uh, that will then pollute the air, and so they're going to have a tough time with um, air. And you can see kind of the picture here of what happened to the air quality there. Okay. Now, with all these new industries that pop up, with the new factories, there are a lot of new ideas that come about. And uh, the one most important idea, probably from this time, is the steam engine. Uh, it's a major uh, power source for all the industries in it, whether you're a factory um, or in transportation, um, because it's used to power the machines in factories instead of using water wheels. Um, they're able to use steam engines, so you don't have to be right next to a river or canal. And it's a much more reliable uh, engine than, let's say, the wind on a, steam, uh, on, a, on a boat or a pack animal like a donkey, a horse, an ox, or whatever that you might use to pull a cart. Um, so they use it in the locomotive as well. A couple other machines that revolutionize... Um, in industry are the spinning jenny and the power loom and these revolutionize the textile industry or the clothing industry where uh, they're now able to produce clothes much cheaper uh, because uh, with the spinning jenny you can spin a lot of threads at one time and then you can take all those threads you've just spun and put them into a power loom where it will weave those threads into uh, sheets of cloth. And these businesses that spring up about this time want to be left alone by the government. And there's a guy named Adam Smith who uh, says that this is the best way to do it. He's a philosopher at the time, and he says we should have a laissez-faire economy, which means let it be. And he argues that the government is, if the government stays out of the businesses, businesses will run things perfectly fine, and everything will be well. Um, business owners will make a lot of money, workers will make some money, and the governments will make a lot of money off those taxes. And um, the governments will agree with this, businesses like how it goes, and the only problem is kind of to the workers where um, they're going to have longer work days, they're going to have low wages and dangerous conditions because no one's stepping in and, and protecting them. Uh, but this would drive up prices, um, according to uh, Adam Smith and the followers of this. And so uh, what happens then is the government steps in, uses these laissez-faire programs, um, and along with that, it allows people to jump in to support industries, and they use capital or money that they use for investments to uh, put money down to help these mis businesses out, and then these businesses grow and they make money off of uh, that business. Um, so they do that. So general... People become investors, and they use their capital to invest in those businesses, and then the government uh, allows that to happen and actually encourages it to happen and to protect their interests, to protect these industries that are then selling their products throughout the world. They create navies uh, to go and protect them, and they also use their navies for a second purpose, which is uh, to protect their colonies and the products that are coming back from their colonies. Um, you might know colonies from the start of the U.S. with the 13 colonies where we were set up by Great Britain and we sent raw materials back to Britain and in return they protected us and uh, they sent us over finished products. And that's how the colonization works here again. Okay, This is a little bit later than, well, it's actually during the time of the 13 colonies, but uh, we'll see a real push for colonization later in this period. And... All the countries in Europe will try to go and take over as many new territories as they can uh, that aren't settled by other European uh, countries at the time. And uh, the two reasons are, one, they need the raw materials. You can't grow cotton in Britain. Timber is running out in Britain. Metals are running out. And so you go conquer a new territory like India where they can grow cotton and you get the cotton from there. Or... Um, in Canada, you get lumber from the trees and you get it sent back to Britain, so then you can use that. And then in return, what they do is they send these finished products out to their colonies and make money off of that because the, the factories are producing so much that all the people in Britain or all the people in Germany or whatever European country you're looking at um, 
the people can't buy anymore. They've got enough or they don't have the money to buy more. And so they send them to the colonies where they can uh, sell them. And uh, this turns out to be a great deal for uh, the Western powers. And, and it allows them to thrive. And um, you can see it allows them to also, uh, with these strong navies, and they'll also build up the armies at the same time to be able to take over these territories, they start to conquer the world. And that's how we'll eventually get to um, before the World Wars in 1914, most of the world being um, conquered in Africa. Most of the territories are conquered in Africa. Most of Asia is conquered. Um, South and North America are free, but that's because they've already um, rebelled from uh, their uh, colonizers. Um, and so this is a major effect of the Industrial Revolution along with the um, new inventions um, the uh, the shift from people from farms to cities, and it just completely changes the world.